It wouldn't be DEF CON without some awkward hugs and some awesome pen testing stories. Can you guess who we're talking to next? Secure Ninja. I'm finally catching up again with Jason E. Street. He is now the InfoSec Ranger at Pony Express. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Absolutely, so good to talk with you again. We see you every year at DEFCON, but we haven't interviewed you for a while. And you've been doing all kinds of crazy stuff. How have you been and what have you been doing? Uh, getting into trouble, then trying to get out of trouble, uh, giving out a few hugs here and there. Uh, but, you know, mainly just doing what I do. Right. <laughs> So, what DEF CON is this for you now? I know I interviewed you at DEF CON like five years ago. So where are we now? I think this is my 12th DEF CON now. Yeah, it's 12, uh, 12 years of DEF CON. Okay, and talk to me about all of this you've got going on. Uh, well, it's like Pokemon. you got to catch them all, you know? Yeah. It's like, uh, it's, uh, this was a, uh, from a conference in Japan, I think, or uh, a friend gave me that was there. Uh, this is the DCA01 uh, party invite for the DCA801 group. Uh, this is the Goon Badge because I'm the uh, global coordinator for DEF CON groups now. Awesome. So I've been such a fanboy, they decided to actually give me a job. Yay. And uh, this is uh, just this is just good hygiene, actually. <laughs> it's like, use this four times a day, then you're supposed to get three hours of sleep, two meals, and one shower. And and I tell people, like, look, this, this isn't for me, this is for you. Right. It's like, and uh, this was a Tiara Con. Uh, which was a uh, conference that actually was talking about getting women, uh, more women in information security. Yes. Uh, this is for the Telefreak Party invite, uh, for the Telefreak Party. Excellent. It's like old school freakers. Um, I don't have that much bling bling. I could have gotten more, but you know, I just haven't, haven't been busy, so. Okay, you can only carry and wear so much. And let's see the backpack. Oh yeah. There, we have so much visual stuff going on with you. It's amazing. Well, the, uh, the backpack, it's like, uh, I got this from Cambodia, uh, Indonesia. Thailand, uh, wow. Egypt, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Bulgaria, Paris. So wherever I go to different countries that I've had a really good experience with, it's like I'll get a keychain from them. Like these two are from Bucharest, Inclusion of Polka, Romania. Uh, I bought that in uh, Thailand as well. Amazing. And then uh, Beijing, uh, New Delhi, India, South Africa, uh, Malaysia. And this was my favorite, uh, Mont Saint Michel in uh, France. Oh, so cool. yeah, it's a. Few, I like the bling. You know, it's like I, I gotta have the appropriate amount of flair right. is, is the key thing. So you know, especially when you're here, that's very important. Yeah. Now I know you're like the most humble person, so you'll probably resist this. But you are one of the most well-known, most famous hackers, especially in the DEF CON community. Well. Couch that way, yes. It's like I'm I'm known in the industry. I try to explain to people that like to think of information that we're rock stars. I'm like, no, we're not rock stars. We're like dentists. The guy, the the orthodontist who created Invisalign braces. He's a multimillionaire. He goes to dentist conferences all over the world talking about his invention and his creation. He uh, has gotten books out. I'm sure it's like he's been interviewed everywhere. You know what happens when he steps out of that conference? You know, people are going up to him and asking him for pictures. They're asking him to sign his books. As soon as he steps out of that conference, he's a dentist. Right. I mean, he's so much, I care so little about, I don't even, I forgot to remember what his name was to tell you what it was. Right. That's what we are. We tell people things they don't want to hear. We tell them that they have to practice good hygiene so they can be safe. Uh, we tell them uh, when they do something bad happens, when they get a cavity or a network breach, we have to go in and it's an expensive and invasive procedure to get it repaired and no one wants to come and see us. Right. We're dentists. It's, it's a painful like a process. Dentist. Exactly. So. so what you do most of the time is pen testing yeah. all around the world. Yes. How is that? Like, what are some of the experiences you've had? I mean, I know you have tons, but tell me like some highlights about that. Um, I think a, a few of my highlights was one, um, I broke into a, uh, a very exclusive, exclusive hotel in the south of France. And I broke in using uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms, barefoot, and a hacker shirt. That was it. And I got in, I acted like I was like jet lagged and I was trying to walk around and I got into a back door entrance. Was in there for over 30 minutes getting full access until I got the, uh, the night uh, hotel staff to uh, let me up in the employee elevator. And I literally told the hotel staff, I was like, um, I shouldn't be here. Um, why am I here? I don't need to be 
here. And then you look at them and pause like they did something wrong. And then he put me in the employee elevator that led me up into the business part of the hotel behind the reception desk. And I saw a computer that was unlocked and had the hotel keys on their desk. I could have totally compromised the whole entire hotel. Wow. So that, that was a really good one. Um, I've broken into, uh, I actually have surveillance footage from Beirut, Lebanon showing me breaking into a bank. Uh, from the minute I walked in with a DEF CON leather jacket and red Thundercat tennis shoes to the time I had full access and compromised it was two minutes and 22 seconds. So it was, it was pretty good. Those are, those are some of the highlights. So the way I see it, the only difference between pen testing and actual criminal activity is the permission that you get to go in and do the things that you're going to do. And it's surprising to me that companies are actually willing to just give you this permission. Do they always give you just free range to do whatever you want in any way you want, or are there sometimes restrictions? Uh, there, there's usually a scope of work, and uh, it's, it's sort of funny because I tell people that an attacker and an actual criminal, they have this much range of going after you. They, they can throw the kitchen sink at you, no problem. But then the company comes up, we, we want you to attack us just like an attacker would. And I'm like, okay, sure, but only Monday through Friday, because we want to make sure we have an incident response team ready in case something happens. So like, okay, but attack us just like an attacker would. And I'm like, sure, oh wait, but, but it's best if you know we got some sensitive programs running, so can you do it between 2 a.m. and like 5 a.m.? And I'm like, sure, okay, fine. But attack us just like an attacker would. And I'm like, okay. And, like, and then they're like, oh, but you know what else? It's like, we, we don't really want you to do the productions. Here's this developer server that we put on the internet. Go after it. Attack us just like an attacker would. And I'm like, yes, that's realistic. And so it doesn't matter, and I try to tell people, it doesn't matter how much scope you give me. I'm going to get in. Attacker that is dedicated to get into your network will get in at that point. I was doing a state treasury job where they were very adamant about limiting my scope to the barest possible minimums. Because they, and, and let's phrase it, they didn't want me to succeed. They said I couldn't use any uh, lock picking tools, I couldn't uh, jimmy any of the doors to get into the building. I couldn't come in until after 5.30 in the day. It was an office building that they shared with other tenants. I couldn't talk to anybody going in and out the door, but I still had to try to get in. Once I got in, I couldn't go anywhere but the public space. I could only talk to a cleaning crew person, and here's the kicker. Because they weren't an employee, a direct employee of the treasury, I couldn't lie to her because that wouldn't be fair. So I actually have this on video. I did a talk last year called Breaking in Bad. And I actually, you get to hear the audio as I tell her the exact truth in a very deceitful way, and she let me in. What? You, you told her that you were a hired penetration tester? No. I told her I was just coming back from the bathroom. I had just been there. I've been working late at night. They hired me. I didn't have my employee badge because I do have a valid employee badge. I didn't say it was their employee badge. And I said I just needed to do one thing, which was destroy their network. It's like I told her the complete truth. Wow, so she, would she think you were being sarcastic about destroying the network? No, no, or? I didn't say that part. Oh, okay, it's okay. like, no, I just said I needed to do one thing, which right. was destroy her network. And the bathroom was legitimate and the badge. I was there for over two hours waiting for her to get there. I drank water. I, I was like, literally, it was one of the worst jobs I've ever done because I have really bad ADHD. Yeah. And my, my iPhone battery was like at 2%. It's like, there's only so many Angry Birds you can play right. in two hours. It was bad. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. And I also want to um, point out, speaking of crazy, this, yes. which we were leafing through it, and we noticed we recognized some faces yes. and some particular spellings of names. Yes. You spell your name with a Y. So tell me about this. How did you end up in a comic book? Well, my life has been pretty comical. So, yeah. You know, it was bound to happen at some point. So, um, well, this is a great um, comic book. It's called Hacker Strip, and they're actually uh, selling their books here at DEF CON, and they, they've got them online at Hacker hackerstrip.com, where they're actually taking real stories from hackers and turning them into comic book form. It helps educate the public, like, wow, this exists, and it's just a really cool outlet to show this is what hackers do. And so, uh, and since some of my stories are pretty out there and, and unusual, uh, I've, I've gotten two stories in here, uh, one breaking into a bank in Beirut, and another place uh, breaking into a place uh, uh, in downtown Manhattan. So yeah, so it, it, I, I really love it. My, 
I am not a cool dad. He's like, you know, I'm just dad. It's like, they don't, they see all this, they barely even recognize, like, whatever, dad. Okay, you go, they think it's all blase, you know? So it's like, it's like, I'm like I tell him, it's like, I was on the Great Wall of China. He's like, whatever. It's like, are you coming home? It's like, so it's crazy. But this, when I told him I was in the comic book, I was like, oh, now it's our Sam. Yeah, and, and the, the funniest uh, moment I've ever had was scrolling down, because you know, you're not supposed to read the comments on YouTube, but I, sometimes I'll, I'll glance at them every once in a while. Yeah. And on one of my talks, I see this uh, user account, it's like, that's my dad, in all caps. And I was like, and so that's when it came a little bit cooler when they found out, oh wait, our dad's on YouTube. Right. So, because if you're not on YouTube, you're not on anywhere, right? The kids are all on YouTube, and if you're on YouTube, they're, yeah. So that, so that helped out a little bit. So Send your kids over to Secure Ninja TV to watch this interview. Oh, yes, Jason's I will. kids. How old are they? Uh, my uh, son's 15, and my daughter's 10. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you know, before we wrap this up, you are, for our viewers who don't know, you're most famous for giving out your awkward hugs. Yes. Are you still giving them out? All the time. All the time. Have they become more or less awkward over the years? Uh, I've had to actually up my awkward game. It's like, uh, people are like, it's like, oh, that's not awkward enough. I'm like, okay, well, let's do this. So <laughs> it's gotten to, pr I've had some pretty awkward ones this year. The, the best one was the meta awkward hug I did with Dan Kaminsky. He was wearing a shirt that had like, uh, from the Lion King where they were holding up Simba. But the, uh, the guy was holding up Elvis Presley. And so what I did was I had uh, Dan stand on a chair and then I reenacted the pose of holding him up as I hugged him. So that was, that was one of my best ones uh, at this con so far. Amazing. And then yesterday, actually, we, we did our first 360 camera awkward hug with I, you that and was, Tara Wheeler. I mean, it's just, you got to see the uh, technology is just advancing. It's like, I don't know when we're going to get virtual reality awkward hugs. It's like, I want to make sure that you're the one of the first ones I do the awkward hug in virtual reality. That'll be, that'll be different. I gotta, Probably oh, next year. Yeah, I've got a vibe at home. We can make this happen. Excellent. Okay, we're hackers. We can, we can make it work. Let's do it. Well, we got to have an awkward hug now. For sure, for sure. So, it's always so awkward figuring out what to... I got to limber up. I know, right? I know, I usually go for my yoga poses, but... Uh, there you go. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think here. I'll start. I'll start. All right, there we go. Well, actually, hold on. In, <laughs> up. Whoa! Awkward! Huh? <laughs> That was fantastic. That was an awkward hug. <laughs> You're you awesome, Jason. Real Thank hug. You. This guy's great. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And how can people like learn more about your life and follow things that you're doing? I'm way too easy to Google, unfortunately. But on uh, Twitter, uh, J Y S O N S T R E T. Uh, my uh, uh, website, verboten.com and forbidden.com and hackerspeak. So if you check my Twitter profile, you'll see those websites. And awesome. that's about it. Awesome. We'll put those links in our video. And thanks so much for talking with us again. It was awesome to catch up with you. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy the awkward hugs. I know, go. definitely. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Secure Ninja TV. If you're not yet a subscriber, click the red subscribe button below so you don't miss any of the content we're producing here from DEF CON 24. Also, leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of this episode. Let us know if you were at DEF CON and let us know what sort of future content you would like to see. I'm Alicia Webb, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.